Zombieland Double Tap from the director of Venom and the writers of Deadpool. Hmm. Do those credits equal a sequel worthy of the title Zombieland? It's time to nut up or shut up. Now, to be fair, Double Tap is directed by the same guy who directed the first Zombieland, so at least there's going to be consistency, right? We pick up the story 10 years later, and everybody is obviously older, and most noticeably in Abigail Breslin as Little Rock. There's no getting around it. The only way they can even make the sequel with this long in between is to actually acknowledge the time change because she's no longer a little girl, and that's fine. It totally works. Just like the first one, the film is very self-aware. And it even addresses the audience through narration, which is snarky, sarcastic, and funny. In this one, if you've seen the trailers, we do get introduced to a few new characters. We have Rosario Dawson, Luke Wilson, Thomas Middleditch, and Zoe Deutsch. I enjoyed Wilson and Middleditch, and I thought they were funny and they were good together. And they were a good addition to the cast. I mean, it was kind of reminded me of a Shaun of the Dead moment where you see their doppelgangers, really. And it's like, it's in the trailer where Emma Stone is going, do, do you see this? This is weird, right? Are you, are you, am I the only one noticing this? And so, it, because we, the audience are also doing this. And so it's great to laugh along with them. And there is one action scene that they're in that is very Kingsman-ish. And I loved it. I mean, it was really well shot, just felt great, high energy, high action, and just craziness. From the trailer, I was not sure about Zoe Deutsch. I mean, I figured that she'd probably have a good scene or two, but really she ended up stealing a ton of the scenes that she was in. I mean, she got some of the best lines in the film and she was stupid funny. I mean, it was crazy at just how much she made me laugh and I was completely unexpected and just taken aback by that. Well, not taken aback. I mean, I was just caught off guard by it, especially because at times she's actually annoying, but what's coming out of her mouth is really funny. Now, as to be expected, I did laugh out loud a lot during the film, but what surprised me too is that there was a lot of tension in this. I mean, there were parts where I was nervous about what was gonna happen next. I mean, I found myself just really caught up in the story and it's not a deep story by any means, but it still was told in such a way and crafted in a way that I was really invested and I, I was, I was like, ooh, 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 what's gonna happen? The action in this is a lot of fun and it's over the top, which I think adds a lot to the funness of that. Funness, you like that? I'm making up these words. But there are some scenes that just feel like they go on a little too long. Like they're trying the joke out to extend it, but it's not funny and it's not really adding anything to the overall story. So it would have been better to just cut these a little bit and then move on. Now, luckily though, once that scene ends, we get right back into the action or right back into the story. And so it doesn't really detract too much, but as you're sitting there, I did feel, at least feel myself going, all right, wrap this one up. I'm, I'm, it's not fun anymore, go. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, gosh, I'm not sure we really needed this sequel, but I'm really glad that we have it. I mean, it is a lot of fun. It's really funny. There's some really good action. And, you know, it's just characters that if you saw the first one, which I hope you did because you're seeing the second one or you're considering <laughs> seeing the second one, that it's just a lot of fun with them. They connect really well in their jacked up little family of sorts. And so it's a lot of fun to watch just the four and now even more new characters on the screen. I really like also how the relationships of all the characters have grown. I mean, Jesse Eisenberg and Woody Harrelson and Emma Stone and Abigail Breslin, just together as they're making up that messed up kind of weird family, that you just see them just mesh together. And now we're seeing them, you know, 10 years later and they're still together. And so something is working. I mean, they're not, they haven't killed each other and <laughs> and they're still kind of getting along. Eh, well, sort of, but at least it's fun and it's kind of realistic in that way. I mean, as much as, you know, good friends or something, you'd rib each other, they get on your nerves, you punch them and then you move on. Overall, I had a lot of fun with Double Tap. I mean, it is a sequel that is worthy of the first. There is some really good action. There's a lot of great comedy. There is really good tension as well. And just some unexpected moments that, that caught me off guard and I appreciated that. There's a mid credit scene that is actually pretty long. So you wanna stick around for that because it is worth watching. It's a lot of fun and it answers some of the questions that you didn't know you had. 
And then there is a post credit scene. And while it's totally unnecessary, if you found yourself sitting through the credits already, you stick around for the, you know, the last 30 seconds because it is funny and it is great to watch. There's no nudity, implied sex, a lot of profanity, and of course, a ton of violence. I give Zombieland Double Tap four and a half out of five couches. Okay, so it's a zombie apocalypse. You only get to choose one weapon. What is it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.